Hi, I'm John and this is Up For Excel. And today I'm going to show you how you add seasonality to a sales forecast so you can end up like I'm showing you. Now we need to apply some seasonality to this because we can't legitimately put that forward as a sensible forecast because we know that looking at the shape of the years, you know, Q4, for example, appears to be particularly high sales month and it would be daft to put some kind of even spread across the year forward as a sensible forecast. So we'll add seasonality. And there's numerous kind of ways of, of doing this. But one thing I could do is I'm going to add a calc column I'll call it calc one, because we might need more than one of them, where I'm going to divide the forecast by the sales. I'll give us some kind of ratio of how accurate the forecast was to the sales. And I'm also going to rename this as forecast one. And I'm going to insert a column and call that forecast because actually I'm not going to call it forecast one, I'm going to call it forecast calc. Uh, I won't just wrap that text there. So we have this ratio going on here. Now for the bottom four periods, I suggest that we take the average Q1 ratio and then multiply that by the forecast to give us a seasonally adjusted number. So the reason this is going to work or it will give us some kind of idea is that what we're saying is that our trend line gives us in an accuracy in Q1, for example. Um, so in that case, it's slightly over exaggerated Q1. Here it's slightly over exaggerated Q1 and same here. So we know that chances are that this bar here for Q1 is over exaggerated. So we want to lower it and we want to lower it by the average of the error on in the previous three quarter ones. So I'm just going to take an average and I could do this manually by picking, holding down control and picking all the Q1 num numbers, which are those, and hit enter and that will give us our average. An alternative way of doing this is to use the average if formula. So we'll do average if. We need to pick our range that we're checking our criteria against, which is the quarter. So we want to average a particular quarter and we'll fix that range by pushing F4. We'll then pick the quarter that we want to look for, which in this case is two. But we won't fix that because when we copy and paste this formula down, we want it to pick up the very next one. And then wherever we want it to look for the average or average which numbers is these set here. So again, highlight that and fix them with F4. And there we go. Now that should give us the exact same result if we copy and paste that formula back on there. And yes, it does. So that proves it's working. So we now have our forecasted ratios. And just to show that they're forecast, I'm going to put them in uh, blue for now, just a different color so we can tell that's a different formula to that. So now in theory, because we divided we divided the forecast by the sales. We need to divide the forecast by that calculation in order to get the sales. And I put that in the wrong place, haven't I? Right. So, so that divided by that. Now we know just to check. I need to just put this. Get that. We know that Q1, because when we eyeball it, we can see Q1 always came out slightly lower. We know we've got our formula the right way around anyway, because we're coming out with a slightly lower, lower number. So I can drag that one down there. And then I now want to add that as a plot on the chart. We'll go back to the chart and see how it looks. Design, select some more data. We're going to now add a series. We'll call it forecast. And we're going to go all the way down there. OK, and while we're at it, we're going to um, I'm going to change this axis label to include the new quarters on the bottom as well. OK, so I've now put them back on the chart, but the key and you can see that we now have some seasonality. So we have a high Q4 
a relatively high Q3, slight dip from one to two. And to be honest, that dip from one to two, it only happens in 2019 and it happened quite dramatically. So you can see that we're now hedging our bets really, because this is just the average profile, if you like, from the previous three years. And because 2019 was such an outlier, it's distorted it slightly. So we've ended up with very similar values there. But I think that looks all right. We need to probably now just remove that, I would say. So I just highlighted that entire series and put it on because that was just checking the trend line. You can see this trend line is no longer required either, except that it can sometimes be worth just leaving it on there and extrapolating it further forward again. So and just having a quick look. So we'll go forward eight periods now. And we could do this exact same calculation going forward. For example, if I wanted to do another year, so I go 24, all these formulas are set up to, to pick this up. I should be able to just go and do this like that. And this forecast calc. And the reason that's coming out zero, of course, is because I've hidden these numbers here. So I just need to drag those down as well. There. And that's given us yet some more numbers. If I go to the um, sorry, the design of the chart and select the data again. I actually now could probably do something a bit more sensible and do something like that. I don't know, maybe highlight that. We'll take off that trend line now. And that's a, a reasonable forecast that you've got there for sales. And if you want to uh, tart up that, that chart a bit and get it looking, you can get it looking something like this, which is the one I prepared earlier. I go for all this sort of techniques on a previous video of mine, which is seven tips on for improving the appearance of charts. And that incorporates probably about four or five of those tips to make it look like that. And there you go, a decent sales forecast.